Welcome back again, Forging Friends. We are on to deck number three of six in the uh, Winds of Exchange Celebration decks opening. I'm going to, again, open up another sealed guy, and we will check him out. So far, we've seen a couple interesting decks. I, uh, I really can't complain. I mean, every deck that I've opened so far, uh, both here and at the Celebration, have been... Uh, Pretty solid, I have to say. I uh, I'm really enjoying seeing you know all the new cards and especially the uh, the new uh, Brobnar and Mars seem to be really good. So let's see if we can get anything better here. As I struggle to open open this third box, maybe because it's hard to open, it's going to be an extra good one. We've got Equidon, Mars, and Saurian. All right, we've got what's that? <laughs> Domoil. Thin Shield Holder. And another very uh, symmetrical Archon, bug-like, with that bug-like head down there. All right, let's open it up and see what we got. I really do appreciate them putting these uh, little uh, pull tab things on the front. It makes it much easier to open these decks. All right. Got the cellophane off. We're going to drop down that Archon card. And what we got here for the token is the Prospector. I think people are saying that this is one of the most powerful uh, token creatures because he's expendable, right? You can just destroy him, you can have him fight into something, um, or you can just let him sit there and reap. Either way, he's a threat. That's a, that's a really good token creature. Hopefully we get a lot of generation for him because then we can draw a lot of cards. All right, we're going to start with Saurians. We start with Symposium. Exalt ready and use a friendly creature. If it is a token creature, you may exalt ready and use another friendly creature. Really, really cool. Uh, I like to see that because that, that might just let us use um, two creatures off house. You know, we, uh, if we use a token creature off uh, our uh, Equidon token creature, then we could use, you know, our Mars, our Mars creature after that. So that, that's really cool. I love, love being able to use cards off house. Uh, hopefully we can make use of Exalted Amber pretty well. We have two of those, and this one's got a Capture Pip. We got Praetor Marius, the five-power creature with After Reap. For each exhausted creature uh, to Praetor Marius' left, Capture One. Uh, yeah, so you want to play him on the right flank <laughs> as much as possible. And, uh, and yeah, use everything else and use him, and you get to capture a bunch of Amber. Good Amber Control. Phalanx Strike is an action card with an Amber Pip. Play, choose a creature, deal one damage to, to it for each friendly creature. You may exalt a friendly creature to repeat the preceding effect. So when we see this, we always hope for, I mean, generally speaking, we always hope for a big creature count, but even more so with this card. All right, something I haven't seen here, we've got Legionary Trainer. A creature with two power, play, make a token creature. For each friendly token creature, or each friendly token creature enters play ready. Oh, that is excellent. Okay. So we can just, we, and then we can immediately play it and have it enter ready. That's a really good card. That's a card we'd want to see in multiples. Um, I mean, if, if there's a way we could protect it, that'd be great. So hopefully we're looking for some taunt. And ideally another copy of this. Can we get another copy? Oh, no. But, so we're looking for taunt with that guy for sure. Uh, Grammaticus Thrax, uh, five power, and he enhances two capture pips and a damage pip. Nice. Arm the Plebeians. Uh, Amber, when you play it, make a token creature and board it. Solid card. Like to see that. Got two of that. Excellent. We've got uh, Imperator Drusilla, creature with four power, three armor. Play, destroy another friendly creature. And while there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, they get splash attack four. So this one actually wants us to have fewer creatures than our opponent, but uh, it's, it's a good come from be come from behind play. If we're if we happen to be behind on our opponent, this is a good one to come kind of help us catch up a little bit. And we've got two of that one. We've got Hoplite's Dory, a upgrade with an Amber Pip, and this creature gets plus two power for each exhausted creature to its left. Oh, interesting. So I believe that other guy, that five power guy. Wanted things exa exhausted to his left, right? For each exhausted creature to his left. So maybe, well, this is an after reap ability, so it's possible that we would want, uh, we, would, we wouldn't really want to put these together. If it was an after fight ability, then for sure. <laughs> and that's a cool card, though. Ambrosia Outpost. It's an artifact with an amber pip. 
and uh, we, as an action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of our deck, and if we do, we move one amber from a friendly creature to our pool. So that's cool. Uh, we've seen it before, but what I really like about that is it lets us recur. So even though we have this nice token creature, it's possible that on the other side of the creature, uh, on the other side of the creature, we might have a card that we really want to have in our deck. So this lets us recur it, which is really useful. I like to see that. All right, going on to Mars, creature I haven't seen before. It is the Yixlix Mesmerist, a five power creature with action. A creature captures one from its own side. Oh, that's cool. So you get to choose which of your opponent's creature captures one. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so you can put you can put an amber from their supply on, the, on their weakest creature. That's an action, though, so you have to really specifically do that. It's not like an after-reap ability. Okay. We've got the Xanthix Harvester. A uh, hard card to use, but can gain us an extra amber on reaping if it doesn't have a non-Mars neighbor. We got Tixil Beam Buckler, four power, one armor. Play, deal two damage to a creature, and move it to either flank of its controller's battle line. Good uh, tech play. Get around some uh, some taunts. Iron X Propaganda. It's an upgrade with an Amber Pip. This creature gains after fight, after reap, make a token creature. Wow. So you put this on something really big, you can really uh, make a lot of token creatures with it. Good to see. We have Genetic Blast. Action card with an Amber Pip. Play. Deal two damage to a creature and each other creature with the same name as that creature. So as I said before, I think, this one would be really good against uh, anybody else that might have a Prospector as well. If we have Prospectors, though, this is also going to do two damage to that. So ideally, they have something weak that's not the same name as one of our creatures, and we can take them all out at once. Awesome. Ammonia Clouds is classic. Three damage to each creature. Could be good, depending on what our board state is. <laughs> Red Planet Ray Gun is an upgrade with an Amber Pip. This creature gains after Reap. Choose a creature. Deal one damage to that creature for each Mars creature in play. So that's nice. Um, it requires a lot of Mars creatures in play to deal a lot of damage, but uh, depending on the board and how many creatures we have in this uh, in this deck, that might may or may not be good. Mothership Support uh, action cut with an Amber Pip and a Capture Pip. Play for each friendly ready Mars creature. Deal two damage to a creature. So this is more like the classic Mars. You have to have them on the board and ready. It could be useful. Uh, in my experience, this card usually falls flat. Usually it deals maybe two damage at most. It depends on the situation, though. You got two of those. This one without the capture pit. We've got Airlock, a artifact. Action, discard a non-Mars card from your hand. If you do, draw a card. Okay, so this would be useful to kind of make our Mars turns a little more punchy, potentially. I actually kind of like that one. It's good, especially with our, our draw power from our token. Swap Widget is an artifact. Action. Return a friendly, a ready-friendly Mars creature to your hand, and if you do, put a Mars creature from a diff with a different name from your hand into play and ready it. So say you drew a Mars creature that you want to use um, this turn, you can kind of swap them out and immediately get use out of that new creature. Uh, it's got some niche uses, I think. It depends on what our Mars creatures uh, are and, and uh, if we have any ones with like a lot of utility. We've got... Fixlix or Phylix, the Disintegrator, a one power creature with elusive and action. Your opponent loses one amber for each other friendly Mars creature. Oh, wow. So if you can protect him for a turn and you have a lot of Mars creatures, you can really make your opponent lose a lot of amber. So I don't know that we'll have taunt in this deck, but man, uh, any which way we could protect this would be great because that is that, that could be potentially a lot of amber loss. All right, moving on to Equidon. We have Trading Frenzy. It's an action card with an amber pit. Play, a friendly creature and an enemy creature each capture three from their opponent. So obviously this would be great if you have uh, fewer amber than your opponent. If you have like one or zero amber, then they're capturing one and you're capturing up, uh, up to three. So that that's a very good <laughs> strategic play. It's a trade-off, but uh, only if you let it be a trade-off. Uh, it's not, not always an even trade-off, right? And we have two of those, which is fantastic. I like that card. The Old Tinker is a creature with three power. Elusive, and after Reap, discard a card from your hand and draw a card. So, more additions to the drawing power of this deck. Awesome. Shopping Spree is an action card. Play, discard your hand and draw a card for each card discarded this way. Interesting. Yeah, so this this could be really good if we, if, you know, we have a good uh, Equidon board, and we want to play Equidon, uh, but we have a, a handful of maybe another house. So, but we have this card too, we can kind of, like, 
reap with all of our creatures on board, drop this card, draw a bunch of cards, maybe get some more Equidon cards, or at the end of any Equidon turn, just drop it and and uh, discard one or two cards and, and draw a full hand. Or maybe, uh, you know, one card for each card we discarded at least. Try to get some more Equidon cards. Yeah, I think that's pretty versatile. We've got the Ornate Talking Tray artifact. Amber, when you play it, Omni, destroy an Ornate Talking Tray and make a token creature. Pretty slow token generation, but at least it's an Omni, so you can just drop it down one turn and make a token creature next turn. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's simple and I like it. Oh, we got two of those too. That's nice. Very nice. We've got Forced Retirement. It's an action card with a damage pit. Play, destroy a creature, and if you do, its controller gains one. So I think this is similar to a card we had in Saurian. It's called Sorry About That. Um, yeah, pretty much a copy of it. This one's got a, a damage pip, but it's an Equidon. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's a solid card. Get rid of any threats. Two of those. We've got Ostrasha uh, Recruiter. Four power creature. After Reap, make a token creature. Another one that we'd like to protect and keep out as long as possible, because that is a really good effect. We've got Gezrahi Blacksmith, a four power creature with Elusive. At the start of each player's turn, that player chooses to either make a token creature or draw a card. Oh, man. So it's both players. Oh, my gosh. So that's a, that's a double-edged sword right there. That's a, that is a pure Equidon card if I've ever seen one. Um, and, I mean, my opponent will be the first one to get the effect from this, right? Like, I play it on my turn, my opponent goes. So that is one that I have to really think about. If they have a big board already um, or a lot of destruction effects... Then my creature might actually, <laughs> I mean, what whatever effect uh, their token creature has, uh, they, they could, that could be that could be really bad for me. So I'll have to think about whether or not I'd play this one. Token of appreciation is an action card. Play, make a token creature, forge a key at plus seven current cost, reduced by one amber for each friendly token creature. I've seen this before? I think it's also very good in this one. I've seen I've seen a decent amount of token generation so far, so I think this one could be pulled off. I like it. Cool. And finally, we have Staff Up. It's an action card. Play for the remainder of the turn. When any amount of amber will be added to your pool, make that many token creatures instead. So I wonder if we could use these together. If I had a big amber swing, I mean, it, I guess it wouldn't really make a difference. Either I have the amber in my pool or I have the token creatures. Uh, but the token creatures also let me draw, right? So the amber I can just spend. But if I had, say... The ability to get, you know, randomly 13 amber in a turn. I could play staff up, get all 13 amber, and then play token of appreciation to forge a key for free, and then next turn have all those creatures die, all those tokens die and draw that many cards. So that's a potential combo. I think I like that a lot. That would be really cool if I could pull that off. It might take a lot of work, but we'll see. All right, let's start with the uh, creature count in this one. Uh, right, so we've got... The printed creatures, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve creatures is not very much. That is not very much at all. Uh, that is on the lower end of decks that I've seen. So we'll see if the tokens can make up for it. So we've got one token generator. Um, let's say two... We'll say, mm, we'll count that as three, uh, four, yeah, four, five, six, uh, uh, Six so far. Seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay, so not bad. Nine, nine is still pretty good, and some of those we can use multiple times if we can protect those creatures. So, twelve creatures, nine token creatures. Um, yeah, I, that that's okay. It's it's kind of a, medi a mediocre as far as... I mean, I'm a mediocre. I'd say middling as far as uh, the, the creature count. Let's see how much amber we have on the cards. 
I'm uh, infamously bad at this, but we'll <laughs> we'll try to do a, a rough count at least. Uh, see how much amber we have printed uh, on the cards. Let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 10 token creature generators. So nine amber. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen. Yeah, so far we've had about the same amount in each deck. Uh, fourteen amber, still about two keys on the cards. Uh, twelve creatures, eleven token generators. I think even though uh, it seems to be lower on the numbers of creatures, I think the action cards in this deck kind of make up for it. I think there's there's a lot of board control. Um, a lot of creature token generation that can be recurred. There's that creature that can that makes one every time it reaps, which is really cool. We've got these artifacts that can be, you know, they shuffle back in the deck. They can come back and make more token creatures. Um, and then we have that one card where it makes one for every amber week that goes into our pool. So we can get a whole bunch that way, especially if we want to combine that with tokens of appreciation. That would be really cool. Um, and then we have that to get more cards in our hand. So I think there's a lot of really good utility in this deck. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays, um, for sure. So, yeah, I like it. All right. Well, thank you all again for watching, and I will be back very soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.